guys, come on now. Your line start. Keep them short, 45 seconds. Oh. Stay short, eh? Keep them short. Dave, you're next with your line. When you pull your hockey bag out for the first time this autumn, the most important thing, do you have everything you need? Is all your equipment in good shape? Do those shin pads that fit you last year, are they still long enough to cover you and protect your legs? Are the breezers, are they too big or too small? Can you move comfortably in them? Elbow pads, are they going to be big enough to cover the area they're supposed to and not too big so they stay in position? Shoulder pads, there to protect you along the boards. Your, your gloves, are they big enough to protect your wrists and small enough so that you can control them? An important head protection, your helmet, your face mask, mouth guard. All very important and you'll need them ready opening day. Skates, do they fit well, comfortable, and are they sharp? You should have a couple of hockey sticks ready when you show up at the arena opening night. Two of them, one just a spare in case. All these things are important preparation. When you arrive for opening practice or game, are you ready to go? Now that we've gathered all our equipment together and everybody's skates are sharp and all the equipment fits, we're ready to start the season. Before your first practice or tryout, it's a good idea if you can get on the ice. Have a little skate, it might be public skating at the local arena, any place that you can get out on the ice and feel comfortable. Our opening drill, I'll describe it to you, we'll come out of the corners on both sides and I'll set up some pylons. You'll uh, handle the puck out around a high pylon and go back in for a shot on the goalie from the top of the circle. Come on Brian, let's go, that's it, around the cone. When you get to your opening practice, get there on time, be a little bit early, make sure you, you're, you're well prepared for what you want to do. Uh, on the ice, your coach, who's the person who will be coaching your team, is going to give you some drills that he'll want you to do. Try to follow them just as he asks you to do them. And with enthusiasm, you're trying to make an impression on the coach. And if you're the first guy in line, if you're, the, if you're the, always there when he blows the whistle and comes back to the circle and you're there, you're going to make an impression on him and that's what you'd like to do. Who do you think of when you think about a, a complete player for the North Stars? Mike? Mike Madonna. Mike Madonna is becoming a complete player as he learns all the different parts of the game. He's such a strong skater, uh, great shot, good on offense, and now he's learning how to play with his line mates, how to fill his role within the team. Bobby Smith is a complete player. Bobby Smith, who uh, with the North Stars years ago scored well over 100 points, now has learned how to play at his own end of the rink. He checks hard in his own end, he digs pucks out of the corners, he does the work in his own end as much as he does in the other team's end. And Those are the kinds of things that, that make him a complete player. One other place that you, you become a, a complete player is when you recognize the skills that you have that are good, you use them, and the skills that you're weak in, and you work hard to try to improve them. All those things make a good, complete hockey player, and if you've got one or, or more on your team, you're going to be a good team. It's important to combine physical and mental conditioning. It, it's a base to build all the other skills upon. In ice hockey, Flexibility is very important. The muscles need to be flexed so that when you're on the ice, you're loose. It helps you to avoid injury. Muscle endurance can be built through proper push-ups. The abdominal, abdominal muscles can be built up with sit-ups. The groin muscles, which are ever so important in skating, have to be loosened and prepared before you get on the ice. All this will help you to be in good physical condition when you hit the ice. Mental preparation is getting yourself ready to do the things on the ice before you arrive at the rink. Maybe in the car on the way to the rink or at home before you leave uh, to go to the rink. What did you practice in your last practice or what instruction has the coach been giving you lately? If you review that 
and put it in your mind that you want to do that during the game. Uh, what makes you a good player? What are the things that you do well when you're having a good game? And go over those in your mind. To get off to a good quick start, there are some things that, that you need. Uh, if you spread out, I'll give you an example and then you guys can try some right after me. In this position, I've got my, my legs flexed at the knees, my feet are about shoulder width apart, I'm leaning forward slightly and I'm in a, in a tense up position ready to take off. Now I need quick, powerful strides to start with. Okay, make sure now you get good arm movement this way. You don't want, you don't want to be trying to skate ahead and putting some energy going uh, across the front of your body. You've got your arms helping to drive you. You ready? Okay, Nick, go. Good. Those first couple of strides, Brian, really push on them. Dig your skates in. Way you go. Think about some of the things we spoke about that you want to put into your starts. And each time it's your turn to come up in line, you practice it, you'll see, you'll get better. Now lesson six is the skating stride. Now that we've gotten a good start, we need to extend our leg to get all the efficiency and power we can in our skating stride. You'll be bent, flexed at the knees. You're going to extend your leg as far as you can, keeping your blade in the ice as long as you can, low to the ice. At the very end of your stride, then you'll extend your ankle, even to give you a little bit extra at the very end. And then quickly, keeping your skate and your foot low to the ice, you'll bring that blade right back in, cocking your knee, ready to push on the next stride. While you're doing this, of course, your other leg has already started to stride out the other side. Okay, off you go. You have to exaggerate the stride that you're using. That way you get a real feel for keeping your blades down in the ice and low to the ice. And if you concentrate on it and you practice it, you'll get better at it. The crossovers is another stride that we use to change direction. It can also be used to pick up speed. You can pick up a lot of speed and a lot of power using the, cross, the crossovers properly. They're a difficult thing to master. Uh, some of the things that you must remember are the inside leg, the one that goes underneath, should also be extended. Uh, you should open up your upper body in the direction that you're traveling to make it easy for your hips to turn. That's the way, Brian. Push that back leg underneath. Keep your head up. Our last three lessons have all dealt with the skill of skating. We've dealt with, first of all, Brian, it was? It was um, starting. Starting. Back. Quick starts. Secondly, Nick? A good stride. A good stride. And finally, what did we finish up with? Crossovers. Mario? With the crossover stride. It's a, it's a great skill, there's always improvement that you can do on it, and when you're talking about ice hockey, skating is the basic skill that you need to begin with. A couple of points about handling the puck. You're going to have your hands spread on your stick, not too far apart, so you're comfortable and you'll keep your arms away from your body. A good way that you can practice puck control is by bringing the puck and drawing it in a figure eight around two objects on the ice, like two other pucks. And to do that, if you notice my wrists, you've got to turn your wrists to cup the blade of the stick to protect the puck. This is the movement that you'll make as you're skating, shifting the puck. Keep your feet in the middle, move the puck around. Use your wrist to curl that puck around. Got to bend those wrists. That's it. Anytime that you're on the ice and you're standing in line waiting for your drill, you can have a puck on your stick and you feel it and you roll it on your stick. It's from the stick handling that you can put the puck into position to pass it. You can put it into position to shoot it.
Now protecting the puck, if, if I take the puck, I try to keep it in a position where my opponent can't get it from me. And Nick, if you want to come and take it, if he comes on this side, I block him out and I move the puck into a safe place. I don't have to have the puck on my stick and I don't have to get the puck in the open. As long as I've got it where I want it, then eventually one of my teammates will come and I can give the puck to them. What happens is if you have your puck on the, your stick on the puck all the time, he's going to hit your stick and then the puck goes flying. But if you don't have your stick on the puck, the guy hits your stick and you just block him out. The skill of protecting the puck can be used by almost everybody, maybe not the goaltender, in all different parts of the ice. You don't have to throw the puck blindly to another part of the ice where the other team recovers it. You work hard to get the puck and you want to keep it. Sometimes you have to use your body to keep your opponent away until your teammates get close enough so they can come in and help you. And we all know how important good passing can be to team play. Some of the important things, you have your hands spread comfortably on your stick, you have your head up, you see your receiver, and you slide the puck on the ice. You want to push the puck rather than slap the puck. This is an example of slapping the puck. That's what we try to stay away from. You're going to control the puck. You see your receiver, you slide it to him. Good. And it's so important that the passes go tape to tape. Now we have a passing drill that we'll set up and we'll go through a passing drill and take some shots on the goalie. Come here, Mario. Show me where you want it, Mario. Put your stick down. Good. The most important things I think on passing the puck are passing the puck flat on the ice, sliding it so that your receiver is going to pick it up on the blade of his stick. And the other thing that's important is quickness, that you pass the puck quickly between each other. You absorb the puck by taking the force of the puck on your stick, cupping the blade of your stick so that the puck won't flip up. That way you have complete control of the puck. You use your wrist and your forearm to absorb that shock. Sometimes passes can be really hard. You've got to be ready for them. The, the passer and the receiver have to work like a team. You need good, flat, quick passes and the receiver needs to communicate. He needs to have his, his stick on the ice for a good target for the, for the passer and that way the connection will be made. The puck will move from one guy's stick to the other guy's stick and the play continues. Uh, you've been uh, great in this drill and uh, we're going to move on from passing and uh, receiving to our shooting drills in our next lessons. For the wrist shot, you want to control the puck on the blade of your stick and you move the puck into shooting position at the side of your body. Your hands are slightly spread, comfortable on your stick, and you have your head up so that you see the net. You feel the puck on your stick, you shift your weight from your back foot to your front foot, and you wrist the puck. You wrist the puck using your arms, particularly your lower arm, and rolling your wrists over. Before the goalie's ready, puck is in the net. Some of the important things about a wrist shot are to get the puck into shooting position. If it's from a pass or from a puck control, you move the puck to shooting position. You have your head up so you see the net and see the goalie. Shift the weight from the back foot on through the front foot. As in shooting the wrist shot, you must put the puck in shooting position. For a slap shot, it means that the puck is slightly ahead of you. You place the puck in front of you, see the net, see the goalie, and then as you move into the puck with the weight on your back leg, you draw your stick back. Transfer your weight to the front leg and follow through. There's some other things that are important for the slap shot as well. 
That is that you hit the puck almost on the back of the puck, just behind it. Your stick makes contact here. And notice how my weight has moved from my back foot to my front foot. Not only am I using my arms, but I'm using my legs, my shoulders. All my weight is behind the shot. That gives you power, and that's what the slap shot is, a powerful shot. You can see in this example that Nick has the puck out in front of him. Before he could shoot, he'd have to move the puck into shooting position again. The goalie picks up that information. The goalie's taking information from him, everything that he gives him as he's going in. If he sees that puck out here in this position, the goalie says, he's got a deke, he can't shoot, doesn't have the puck. He moves with the deke and he's ready for it. The double threat position means finding yourself alone with the goalie and taking the puck and putting it into shooting position. When it's in shooting position, you have an option. You have an option to shoot or an option to deke when you get in close to the goalie. So by placing the puck in a shooting position, you can hold the goalie, freeze him, start to move towards him, Nick. Make your decision, deke, and go around. One-on-one -on -one attacking the defensive triangle. You can see Tim here, he's in a defenseman's position. He's not moving. And you can see the way his stick is extended in front of him. His legs are spread. And he leaves this area underneath his stick available to use uh, for us to attack it and try to get around him. The way we do that is by moving off to one side, in this case to the right side. We move the puck underneath, lift our stick up, cross over, pick it up on the other side, and we're able to break the defensive uh, position of him by using that defensive triangle. Go from the other side. Good. Great. Good work. Keep your head up. That's it. Okay, Tim, sum it up. We want to break that defensive triangle. You're going to move the puck towards the defenseman. Slip the puck underneath the stick. Lift your stick up. Move to the opposite side. Pick up the puck. And away you go towards the net. One-on-one -on -one offensive play, as a forward approaching a defenseman, you have a decision to make. Am I going to use the space behind him, or will I use the space in front of him? And in this example, you can see that the forward with the puck is very close to the defenseman, and the space available is behind the defenseman. That's when the puck should be moved down into an open space, and then you try to skate and recover it. In this instance here, the forward sees lots of empty space between himself and the defenseman. He can delay in his skating a little bit and use this space, allowing the defenseman even to back off further. Open up space in front of him, use that space, and try to find a scoring spot in front of the net. You have to see and evaluate whether you should use the space behind the defenseman or in front of the defenseman to create your best offensive chance. One-on-ones all over the ice are important, but in skating backwards and defending against a forward who's coming at you, there are some things you must do. You have to play the body, and to do that, you have to keep your eye on the player's body in front of you. You have to keep your stick on the ice and out in front of you so that you can poke any loose pucks that come free or use your stick to poke a loose puck. You want to force the opponent to the outside of the rink. Give him the outside lane. Take away the middle of the ice. Play your game between the dots. And doing those three things with the competent backward skating will force the shooter to the outside lanes where your goalie can play the shot if there's a shot, or eventually you can use your angle to take him off and move him into the corner, eliminate him, and your centerman comes in and picks up a loose puck and your team goes back on the attack. What are some of the important things that a defenseman must do to be a good player one-on-one -on -one defensively? Keep him in front of you. Yes. Keep a stick on the ice. Stick on the ice in front. Yeah, one more. Keep him to the outside. Push him to the outside and take away a good shooting angle for him.
The defensemen are needed and are required to go back into the corners of their own rink and dig the puck out of the corners, move it up to their forward skaters to get it out of your zone. And some of the things that you can do to help you do that job quickly and efficiently, when you go back to the puck, even if you have time, you go at top speed. Get to the puck as quickly as you can. The quicker you get there, the more time you create for yourself. Before you get to the puck, you can check over your shoulders, both shoulders, as you're skating back, to see where your players are positioned. You'll know where to give the puck before you get to the puck. When you arrive, you take the puck, move it into passing position, see where your players are open, move the puck quickly and a good hard pass onto somebody's stick and now the play is moving out of your zone towards the other end. These are things that make retrieving and moving the puck up ice look easy and it will be if you do them well. The center iceman controls all the face-offs on the ice. Before the puck drops, he should check and make sure that all his teammates are in position, that he has the number of players on the ice that he should have and that they're where he wants them to be. Also on face-offs is a time when you can designate a play, that everybody who's on the ice can be in sync and they know that a planned play will go into progress. Uh, one other thing about a centerman, when the puck hits the ice is a chance for his team to recover the puck, take possession. Now to give himself an advantage, the centerman should watch the referee or the linesman's hand with the puck to anticipate when it'll hit the ice and to try to get a jump on the puck. Be there before the puck gets there. The centerman controls all the face-offs. All the players have to be ready when that puck hits the ice. It's an opportunity for your team to gain possession of the puck each time there's a face-off. We've talked about the centerman at the face-off where he's always there at the drop of the puck and he's the first player who gets a chance to control it. But he also has a lot of other responsibilities to help everyone else on his team. If one of his defensemen would be in here and in trouble with the puck, the centerman can go in and help him to win the puck back in his own zone. If the play would move around to the other side of the net and there'd be a pass made up to his winger on this side, then the centerman, we'd look for him to come and support so that if he needed a short pass, he could be here. As the play moves up the ice, the centerman often is used to shadow the other team's centerman. If his team recovered the puck, then he would join in the attack and try to help him, his uh, forwards as they move into the zone. If he could be the second man in on a four check, a winger in on a four check, then the centerman coming in to help out on the four check as well. As you can see, the centerman covers all parts of the ice. He's there to support and to help and to be of assistance for all the other players on the team. In the defensive zone, the winger has a responsibility to get to a position where he can be an outlet pass for his defenseman. And at times, he has to get to a board position where he can retrieve the puck that's coming along the boards. To get there, you want to move there quickly, be ready to trap the puck against the boards as the defenseman moves it to you. You want to give us a demonstration? Good, make sure you trap it. Good one, that's it, head up, head up. Getting in position is hard work, skating to get open for your defenseman, and when he needs you, you've got to be there. You can take the puck off the boards any way you choose. Look at the puck coming, Mariel, check in front of you, turn your head, trap the puck, and then get your head turned up ice, ready to go. You want to get the puck out of your zone. And that's a big play for a winger. In this lesson, play of the winger, back checking, uh, I, you have to picture that this player is the offensive player, he's going on the attack, and I've decided that he's going to be my responsibility. The first thing I can do is I can yell to my defenseman and tell him, I've got this guy, he's my man. And that means that I'm responsible for this guy all the way to the goal. I want to keep him on the outside of me so that I've got position on him if the play goes to the net. By being here, I also 
cut off any pass that one of his teammates might, might want to make to him. So I'm in between a pass and I've also got position on him to beat him to the net. And if we start to skate together, I always keep that position. And I always keep close to him. Once you've designated yourself as the back checker on this outside forward, your defensemen are going to depend on you to stay with them. Keep them on the outside, keep body contact with them, and go all the way to the net with them if you have to. Good technique for a goalie comes from good posture and a good stance. And although some goalies are different in their technique, they do go back to the basics and all have a very good posture and stance. You can see with Todd that his face, his knees, and his stick are all lined in the same position. His glove is out at the side, not hanging, but ready to move. His blocker out at the other side to cover as much space as possible. And from this position, he can move easily to the left and the right. If he gets down, when he gets back up onto his feet, he comes back into the same position to cover as much of the net as possible. The proper posture gives the goalie good balance, uh, the ability to move, and uh, he covers as much of the net as possible just with his stance. If he goes down onto his knees, when he comes back up, he tries to find the same position quickly. Uh, he's always ready to move from that position and he's comfortable and strong in it. I know you've heard it on, uh, on the TV games, the goalie comes out and blocks the angle. And you can see here that Todd, in a good goaltender's position, is right back on the goal line. And the amount of space that's available for the puck to go in around him. Blocking the angles means moving further out of the net, being aggressive on the shooter. If he would move out to the top of the crease, now you can see the amount of space that he's taken away by moving closer to the puck. There isn't the amount of space to shoot at, and a very aggressive goalie moving out even further, when he knows that the player will shoot, he's blocked a lot of the net by taking away the angle of the shot. Remember, Todd, you have to be aggressive and get off that goal line and get out on the shooters. Have confidence that the, the rebounds and the pucks around the net will be taken care of by your defenseman. An aggressive goalie who cuts down his angles, he'll be a percentage good goalie. Marked out here is the prime scoring area. Further away from the net, secondary. On the perimeter, secondary scoring areas. But when you work your way down into this area, and what you're looking at is the prime place on the ice to score goals from. And often, players are reluctant to stay here. They like to turn away, get outside, turn their back to the net, and they need to stop and stay in this area. If there's a shot and there's a rebound, you back up, you keep your eyes on the net, you got another shot. Somebody comes out, a defenseman comes out to check you, you gotta spin off him. How do you get open again? You gotta get open, keep your eye on the puck, and you stay in this area. You fight for your space here. And that's how you're gonna pick up an extra rebound, an extra shot on net, and you'll score another goal. This is the way that you can move the puck out of your own end zone quickly and efficiently. It looks easy when you do it well, but if you do those things, it'll make it look easy. It's not an easy thing to do. Something like that. <laughs> In Lesson 23, focusing on the play of the goaltender, we talked about... What did we talk about? <laughs> If you decide that you don't want to shoot the puck, that the option is to deke, you're able to deke from that position. We need about another 15 or 20 seconds on it. Okay. okay. Is, he is he deking on this one? Oh. If we tell you, then you'll know. What should I do? This is the movement that you'll make as you're skating, shifting the puck. Once you're responsible for this for, for mm -hmm. go again. Go ahead. Keep body contact with him and go all the way to the goal crease with him. 
if it needs it. <laughs> Okay. We'll try it once more here. I've always had a problem with goalies. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you've been great students. Lesson 26, how to relax after the game. <laughs>